Okay, in this tutorial, what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to now shift from SketchUp. We're going to start going to GIMP. So we're going to first open up GIMP. Photoshop, you can do the same workflow. So what we're going to start doing now is we're going to start cleaning out. So I'm going to go and say File, Open. I'm going to go and open a series of the images that I've exported. Okay, quite, for, quite straightforward and easy. Go to the folder where these are saved. And I'm going to simply start dragging and dropping these into the view. Okay, so drag and drop them into the view. Okay, so all I'm doing here is I'm going to get and crop some of the information that's not required. You can see that there's no background, which is great. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a crop tool and I want to crop these images as close as I can to the ground floor maybe. So get rid of that information and get as close to the ridge as possible. Okay. We might come back to GIMP a bit later on, but for now we're just using GIMP to clean out our images. With the crop tool, make sure that you're going to um, delete crop pixels as well, and simply delete, just make sure that you're not cropping just the layer, you're going to crop the entire image. Okay, so here we're just fine tuning these file, export as, and it, you just keep saving it, overriding the existing files the whole time. Export, replace. So that's East Elevation done. Okay. okay, so export, all right, close that, the scar changes, you don't have to keep saving this, you can if you want to, okay, so that's east, north, you literally just drag and drop it into the view, likewise with this view, just try and crop what you can, it'll keep the same setting, so all I'm doing is just trying to crop the bottom of this drawing, so at least I've got a line at the bottom of the drawing that I can use again and again. Okay, we're going to scale these drawings slightly differently. That's good enough for now. Yeah, I can mark it a bit tighter. Now, we're just simply using this to crop our images. File, export. And you can just export, always PNG file, north, replace. Export. Close that. Scar changes. And you can see the ones that you've done. So east, north have done, perspective, let's just open that. You can also simply right click on this and say open with. So there's that option as well and you can keep opening it with GIMP and it'll open up in a new session every time. So there's that option that you can do as well. Let's crop this as close as I can as well. Some of this stuff we'll get rid of. But we'll see, we can create a kind of a scene that we want to. We can create a scene if you want to. And there are tricks where you can get rid of this background and show it a stone and dirt and put a background of the sky. But we're going to do a bit of that in Inkscape as well and show you how you bring the stuff back. Uh, if you're using Photoshop and Illustrator, try and do a lot of it in here rather. But it's the same workflow. Remember, export, file, export as, PNG. Perspective, replace, export, close. No, discard changes. Okay, perspective's done. Let's just open up our plan view. Our plan view was pretty much, I think I can crop. So let's just crop some of that. Then again, you can also just use a crop tool in Windows to do the same thing. So we're just using crop tool. So you can also use, so this is another tool that you can use. Edit image. So here you can simply you also use the crop tool as well. So you can use crop here as well. This does the same thing. Okay, just to let you know that, press OK. But I'm just going to stick to using GIMP just so that I get comfortable with that workflow. Okay, open with GIMP. Yeah, we can go and quickly open with. You can open all of these quickly. We'll open them all in different tabs, which is fine. And then open with GIMP. Good, section AA. Okay, so here we've got section AA, our plan view. And then this is west elevation. So let's just see if I haven't missed anything. So, and south elevation. So let's open that as well. Open with GIMP, open with GIMP. Okay, great. Okay, good. So this is South View. So let's just start section AA, crop that.
With GIMP, you can be a bit more precise. I'll leave some of that in play. That's fine, I'll leave it just like that. Crop, file, export as, save, replace, export. Okay, close that. It's got changes. Plan we've done, file. So here I'm just going to do some final cropping. Let's get that as close as we can. I can get rid of this stuff a bit later on for now. I'll explain that as well. Just remember when you're putting this into Inkscape, it's coming in as a link. Okay. Export, replace. Export. Okay, there's some things that we're going to have to maybe do. We can either do it here where we fill in the walls, but we'll see. Let's see what we can do in Inkscape. Worst case, we can do that in here as well. Okay. All right, so that's great. So that's fine. This guy changes. This one. And you see, once you get into the flow, this is pretty straightforward and easy. And I've got a line that I can work to the whole time on the ground floor here. That's good. And then just above here. That's perfect. I can probably, that's good. I'll export as export replace. Okay, all that we're doing is, is we're just we're fine-tuning the image that comes out of SketchUp does need a bit of work. So just remember that's all that we're doing. We're just refining the detail, getting the image to the correct size that we can work with in Inkscape or Illustrator. Okay, so it's just to refine those details, just so that we've got better information to work with. Great. Okay, export, replace. Okay, now, export. Um, based on my previous example, I think I'm going to work at scale 1 to 50. Just remember, if you've got multiple stories, you might have to work 1 to 100. Okay, you just need to specify that on your, um, on your document. So we're going to open up Inkscape. Okay, so now in Inkscape, we can close this file now. Yes, okay. First thing that we do in Inkscape is we're going to go and set up our sheet size. So here we're going to go to sheet size. Make sure it's an A1 landscape. Okay, very important. We can now just remember this tool over here. If you can't find it, sometimes it's hidden down here. You might have to go and reset your view to default or wide or custom. Just go and see. I'll leave it to default, then it'll look like this. If you go down to the bottom, if you go to document properties, it opens the same thing. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add create guides all around our page. Very important. Okay. Now we've got our guides around our page. We can double click each one. And here we can move them to the correct location. So just remember, here we just need to provide a 10 mil safe margin if we're going to print. Um, all printers, doesn't matter where you go. They won't have a very good um, safe margin. So that's what we're doing. We're just providing a margin between the paper edge and the, the document that you're setting up, just so that um, you know the bounds in which you're working. If you're going to use the whole background as a color, you can simply then cut a line. You can cut away the white edges if you want a full bleed page in essence. Not all places be will be able to do a full bleed print meaning that it'll print right to the edge. Okay, you need a very specific machine to do that, and usually those prints are quite expensive. Okay, right, so the first thing I've done is I've gone and set up my guide. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab all my processed images. I'm going to simply go and grab, hold uh, control down, and you can simply select all of them in one file swoop and drag and drop them in the view. Okay, what's neat is it will bring all of these in, I just note that these are all coming in as a link. And uh, what I tend to do, I've enabled this, but just make sure, let's go to preferences. Let me just explain something. Importing images, you must always tell it to maybe prompt you. And you always want to bring these ob objects in as a link. Okay. Oh, yes. One last thing. Let's change this to 300 DPI. Very important. Okay. So that we can just make sure. All right, so 
Let's just do that again. All right. Now that I've set that up, let's delete all my images so that I'm getting the clearest resolution possible. Okay, but 300 dpi, if we're going to print downstairs, that's exactly what it will do. Okay, so I can, I'm going to leave it as it was. That was my apologies. I'm going to undo that. So I'm going to go edit. I'm going to keep the resolution of the document. So ignore that step. Okay, preferences. So here I'm just going to leave that. Here I'm just going to leave it just like that. Okay. Okay, that's better. All right, so it's bringing in the image to the actual size. It's not automatically trying to scale it. That's important because it means you want to maintain this look and feel. Okay, now that we've got all our views in, all I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start setting up. And you can see these views are starting to look really good already. The sections I just have to add some detail to in the floor plans, for example, and my perspective. Okay, so let's just see how we set these up. First things first, this is my north elevation. My section AA will come down here. My perspective will come down here. So north, east, south, west. Okay, just remember these. Them in a good location. Okay, so I'm going to work at scale 1 to 50. All right, so let's just open up our calculator. Okay, so we're going to say 1 divided by 50 gives us a ratio of 0, 0 0.2. And I've got a scale bar on my drawing over here at 2 meters. So I'm going to use... What I can do is I can simply use this 5 mil. That's totally up to you. <clears throat> right, so I'm just going to move this floor plan more or less where I need it. Great. I'm going to grab another grid line. <clears throat> I'm going to put this grid line right in the middle. Right here in the middle. Okay, good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, double click on this, and I'm going to say duplicate. I'm going to click here again. And here I'm going to, if I click again, here I'm going, to, I'm going to move this grid line relative to this grid line I've established. Now, technically, I need to move it. So let's say it's 5 meters. So you're going to go cancel 5,000 times by 0 0.02 equals to 100 mil. So here if I type in 100, great. So you can see this image was pretty close. So it means that if I want to scale this image now, now this is quite a neat trick. If you double click on this image, you'll notice when the rotation angles are activated, you can also use Shift S. You'll notice that there's a center mark for this. You can move the center mark and you can actually snap the center mark to a location where you want to scale from. Okay, you can activate your snaps as well. So I can, I might want to activate these snaps so that this I can move this little mark and I can start snapping it onto my guidelines as well. So let's just do that. Activate those two. Now I can it will start snapping onto this guideline. So I can snap it to this corner, which is fantastic. Now I'm going to simply click here again, click in the drawing or shift S. And now I'm going to scale this. Oh yeah. Before I scale, very important, just undo what I did. We need to make sure that we lock the proportions of these images. Very important, move this back to where it's supposed to be. Make this right in the corner here. Let's drop this to there. Good. Okay, now I've changed that. Click again so that the, the stretch icons are active. So all I'm going to do now is try and scale this so that that starts to fit with that scale. And you'll see this will start becoming quite accurate. Okay, maybe just a fraction more. That's perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I know, oops, I didn't scale, it didn't scale from that position quickly. So and this just, you must use Shift S, my apologies. So let's just move this in line with that again. And you need to hold Shift down and then scale. Okay, then it scales relative to that point. Okay, and it'll lock it on a proportion. Okay, so try and get it as accurate as possible. That is perfect. That will work for me. Okay, now that I've scaled this, and you can see I've got my, my, my edges in which to work, I can now move these guidelines somewhere else. I'm going to put this drawing, just remember my snaps are on, so it's trying to snap to stuff. Just remember you can switch the snap off, and it won't snap anymore. Then you can come back. So this snap controls all these snapping down here. 
Uh, this controls all this type of snapping, and then this function here controls all this type of snapping. Okay. All right, so you've got categories of snapping as well. Great, so now that I've got this um, more or less where I want it, I'm going to move these guidelines because I know I've got a north elevation and I've got some line work over here that I can use to line it up. So in essence, this elevation here should match, so scale 1 to 50 should match that elevation. If you are going to use different scales, I can explain that as well, but for now, Let's just follow this workflow. So I'm going to move this and put this right on the middle of this line. Likewise, so it's like you're working on the drawing board, but we're using digital tools to do so. Okay, so grab this, pull this. Okay. All right. Good. I haven't set up any layers yet. We'll do that in a second. So now what I've got is I've got this elevation now that I can now simply use to scale. And you can see I've got a point here where I can lock it to. So I can zoom in, nudge it. That's perfect. Just like that. Now select the image again, grab this little, and now we can snap this rotation point. So what I'll do is I'll snap this rotation point right over there. Then all I'm going to do is click again and then scale my elevation. Okay. Just trying to snap on another, uh, another object there. Sorry, I'll move that. Let's do that again. Remember, shift. Sorry, my apologies. Shift on the top. I'm going to try and scale this up as accurately as possible. But that looks perfect. Now that I've got this scaled in proportion to my plan, and that's a scale 1 to 50, I'm going to grab a ruler from the bottom, snap that at the bottom, and I'm going to use my reach height to help me get this all in line now. So I'm going to scroll down. So as I start getting that, I can leave that where it is, doesn't matter, this one I'm going to grab down. Okay, I'm going to snap that on that black line there. Okay, good. Now, this elevation, I'm going to click on it, grab this point, move it to a location where I can use it. So click this, click again. Just going to find that point again. I've moved it to a bad position. So shift, shift S. I'm trying to find that little, there it is there. Okay, good. I'm going to move it. It doesn't really matter. As long as I move it onto this, this line over here, just like that. Good. I can move this down. It'll snap there. Click again, shift, and you'll try and match the reach heights. So you can zoom in. Shift. All that I'm trying to do is just match these ridge heights. Okay. If it is snapping, just remember you can deactivate that snap to prevent it from snapping. That's better. Just like that. Okay, that's accurate enough. Grab this elevation, do the same here, move this over here. Click again, move this. Move it down to this line right here like that. You can move this down, snap it, switch on your snaps again. Okay, so we've got all those different snaps that you can use the whole time. Let's just grab this one. I'll move my section as well. Let's put my, my perspective is fine. You can scale that. Things that need to be scaled correctly. Okay, so click again. Move this down. Go down here somewhere. Let's move it on to this line over here. Just like that. Perfect. Let's snap this down now. Likewise with this, click again. And I usually put it close to the edge of my building so I can see more or less where I'm working. Good. Okay, so it's like you're working with. Fantastic. All right. So this one I need to scale. Shift, hold shift down. Shift again. That's accurate enough. Okay. Likewise with this one. Let's 
So by using that, that rotation point, you can reset them later on. But for now, if you're not going to reset them, don't worry about them. Um, oops, I moved the image by accident. Um, if you hold pan down, if you hold the space bar, it will pan. Okay, so if you hold the space bar down, it will actually pan for you. So while you're trying to work in a command, shift. And always use the diagonals. Don't use the, the center grips because it will scale it very differently. Okay, so just bear that in mind. But now you can see it's maintained my proportions and it's starting to look pretty good. Shift again. Perfect. Okay, those are all to scale. Fantastic. So my section, I'm going to move down here. My perspective, you can start changing, start setting this up a bit. This you can scale freely, just try and get this in a good location. Okay, so here we've got perspective. I'll put my section over here, and then I'm going to move my elevation. So let's move all of this down here. Let's move these over here. And then we're going to start working with our, get rid of those, double click to delete as well, or you just click on it and press delete, click on it, delete, click on it, delete. Okay, what's interesting, you can also distribute drawings. So let me explain that as well. So these drawings, because they share, you can align them. So there is an aligning tool. So if you go to object, um, align and distribute, you can actually say, you can say first selected. So whatever object was selected first, you can then use that first selected and you can line them all up from the bottom. Okay, so now they're perfectly aligned. And now you can hold control down to move it on your sheet. So here, I'm just gonna try and get these on my sheet quite neat north south this one i can move up a bit and then lock it control so here you can lock it from side to side okay but i'm just going to try i can select this one and then this one hold shift down sorry control select this image hold shift down okay it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing that one and then this one and then that one Come on, control. Interesting. It's supposed to be doing that. Shift. Alt. No. Control. Okay, it's supposed to be selecting both of these, but anyway. Okay, very interesting. It's supposed to be selecting... Um, all right, so it's supposed to be selecting multiple objects, which it's not doing at the moment. Okay, so maybe I've accidentally toggled something off. Okay, but that's something that I'll have to have a look at quickly. But anyway, so I'm going to select this guy, click again. But you can also snap it at the bottom there as well. Control, pull that down, and line these up. Just try and set these up as best as you can. There we go. So if you hold shift down, exactly that, you can align them as well, distribute them. Okay, but this is good enough for now. And then this one, I'm going to simply line up with this one and leave it just like that. Great. So these, I can move up a fraction. Notch those up. Grab those two. Notch those up. Okay. So 1 to 50 will work well. And my perspective, I can move down a bit. And I can edit my perspective. Okay. So it's just how to set up a basic architectural drawing. Okay. Shift. Okay, great. All right, so here I've got my sections. Let's move those two up a bit. And you don't have to add a lot of detail. There's a lot of detail that we can now add in later on. Okay, now that we've kind of set our sheet, sheet up, let's just go and start looking at our layers. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is go and look at our layers. Okay, so you go to, op, you go to layers and you open up the layers tab. So I'm going to create so I'm going to call this page, add, and this is where I'm going to put all my page boundaries, notes, etc. Okay, this one will be all of my um, reference images. So my images that I'm using for um, from, from SketchUp. So I'm just going to call these um, plans. Okay, now we just need to make sure which ones are on what layer so if you go to objects and you open up objects at the top here okay 
you'll now, if you activate this objects icon and you pull this down a bit, so you can expand this down. So click on objects. So if you've got layers, so on objects. Okay, now we can see what's on plan. So here I can go control. Once you've got these in a good position, you can simply go and lock all of these so that you can, you can no longer move these. Okay, so you can simply lock this layer as well to do the same thing. But here you can lock these images. Once they're in a good position, lock them so you don't accidentally move them. Okay, now we're just simply adding detail to these images. And you can see this is this has done a fairly good job. I'm pretty happy with the results. I've got a plan. So now we're going to use Inkscape to add a bit of detail. Okay, so our page setup. What I am going to do is I'm going to add a border. That's totally up to you how you want to present your page. You can use a, a solid full at the background, but we'll reserve that for now. I'm just going to make a quick border. So I'm going to grab a quick border around my sheet. But how you do this is totally up to you. Okay. So I've made a shape. So I'm just going to switch on my fill. Okay. So all I need to do now is go to um, Object, Fill and Stroke. So with this object selected, open up Fill and Stroke. Go to Fill and Stroke quickly. Okay, so here we're going to apply no, so no fill. We're going to apply a stroke. We'll make this orange for now because I like that orange color. And let's just keep keep with that theme. And we're going to make it quite a wide line. So in millimeters, typically make it 0.7 or there and thereabouts. Okay, so now you'll see if I zoom around, I've got a nice dashed line, but I want to make that a solid line. So just select that shape again. And what you also need to make sure is that you keep working on the correct layers. Okay, so if you um, click on layers, make sure the page is activated because it means then I can control it and I can simply select. And if you use the object icon, you can now click this rectangle. Now you can go and edit it. So fill a stroke. Okay, you can act open a fill and stroke. Here I don't I want this to be a solid line. Okay. I'm going to make this a bit thicker. I'll explain why. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to make this quite a thick line as well. So let's make this about one mil. Then what I'm going to do is just to make this look a bit better, I'm going to go back to the shape itself and I can round these corners. So I can actually make it look quite neat. And it'll be applying this because it's a shape, it'll apply it around my whole presentation. So it's just it's a border for my sheet. And then I'm going to put up a little, um, I'm going to put some text in here, call this cabin design. Okay. Great. Now that I've got that shape. Okay. Fantastic. Now all they're going to do is I'm going to adjust the shape to fit my, my presentation. So I'm just dragging this back just so that this fits in. Okay. Here you can drag this. This doesn't have to be precise as long as you you're kind of working on that that line okay within those boundaries just remember that's your safe zone and you can activate that snap so it'll snap on the grid lines but that's good enough you just want to work within those bounds okay fantastic correct okay so now we've got our shape that will work within our sheet then what I might have to do is just put, start putting in some um, text at the bottom here. Just putting, so I'm going to start putting some text around my page as well, just to kind of get my cab, cabin set up. And then we're going to start looking at maybe putting in some backgrounds and then editing these images as well. Okay, so just how we go and edit these images here, etc. Okay. All right, so go back to my page. So go back to layers. I'm going to start a new layer and I'll call this notes. So your notes are always above. Just make sure that. And the way these layers stack up is how they'll read. So from top to bottom. So if the notes is on top of the plans image, it will show over the plans. We'll have to move the plans up and down a bit later, but we'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to go notes. Great. So here I'm going to go and find, I'm going to go and add some text. You can go and find some nice um, font that you want to use. And I'm going to make this quite high. I'm going to make this 10 mil high. 
and I'm going to simply start typing Um, if the text has gone off, you can simply select, grab this red dot, and then you'll start seeing all the text. Okay, so here I might want to make it quite large because I might want to increase the size. Let's make it 20, let's make this 20 mil. Okay. Okay, great. Now, I might pull this down and I might put this right on the edge. I'll cut away some of that text later on. Okay, and you can add effects to this text, for example, but I'm happy with that. And then you can just simply put your, your details at the bottom here. So maybe I'll move this down over here. This is more of a, de a, a design presentation drawing. When it starts becoming more technical, we'll start adding a bit more information. Then you can simply add your name here underneath, just over here. So I'm going to grab this. Okay, here you can also change the font as well. You can give it a, I'm just going to leave it black for now, but there are effects that you can go and apply. Okay, so I'm going to grab some more font. And you can put your student number as well. Okay. And this typically we all make about five mil high. Okay. Fantastic. So you can just put this down here at the top and you can just put this simply right here in the corner. Put your student number so we know who you are. Here, I can move this over here. Great. So that's the first part of what we can do. Now we're going to just add some basic labels. Okay, so we can now go and label these drawings. Typically what we also like to do, so let's just unlock, let's unlock these. Okay, and let's go back to objects and go back to plans. I'm going to select all of these very quickly and I'm going to unlock all of them quickly. So what we typically do is we try and line up the building with each other. So at least we've got a, a line that we, we work with it. Okay, so that's good. So let's grab both of those. That's that back. Yeah, so we're just trying to line these up. So when you look at and read these drawings, they read a bit better. Okay, so that's great. Grab this one. You can use a construction line down here to kind of get it quite accurate. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this result. Okay. My section over here. Okay, all that we have to do now is we can lock lock the whole layer and you'll see that will also do the same thing you don't have to lock the object as well all we have to do now is go back to our notes layer so go back to layers activate your notes layer and go and add some more font okay so this is slightly different so here we're going to start this is usually about uh, five mil or seven mil high Enter. Okay, great. What I do is I select this bottom text here. I select this bottom text and I change that to five or three. Okay, so it depends how you want this to read. But you can see this reads pretty well. North elevation. Great. So I'm going to go control C, control V. You can also use the duplicate command. And you can align these, you can lock and align these. So if you select this one and then that one, you can use the align tool. Okay, objects align. And you can say, um, okay, I'm not a fan of this new, um, I'm not a fan of this new, um, the way this works, but anyway, so first and we can align them from the top. So basically just want them to all align Okay, so that's quite neat Great, 
grab both of these. You can duplicate and then drag them down, control. So that's a good way to do it as well. West elevation, so south, west, so north, east, south, west. We've got a north bar that's come through already. So I'm going to leave that there. This information I'll show you now. We can go and we can move some of this information around. So I don't need that information. Okay. You can maybe, but I'll just show, I'm going to show some room names and I'll show you some other techniques how we can add some detail here. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to quickly complete the sheet. Um, I'm going to add the rest of the notes quickly. Okay, so I've got to go and added a whole lot of additional information here. So I put all my notes in. Here we're going to can put some more notes on the floor and we can just go and add some more notes there as well. But that's something else we'll tackle a bit later and we can make this part of an image. The last thing I want to do is I want to cut away some part of this information here from the shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another rectangle very quickly and I'm just going to create a quick rectangle that I can use to cut away from the shape beneath. Okay, so here I'm just going to quickly grab that, grab that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a path, so path, object to path. I'm going to grab the boundary, just make sure that's selected. I'm going to say object to path as well. Object, path, object to path. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this object and then this object. I'm going to go to path, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to break apart. Great, so this shape. I can delete now if I go back into the shape and I use the path selection tools, you'll notice now that I'll have some uh, undo my apologies. <clears throat> Let's do that again. So now select that shape and, and that shape. Okay. Make sure that's selected. You're gonna go to sorry, I'm gonna select paths or select that shape and that shape. Path. Here we're gonna use this to cut to cut apart okay cut great so if i go into this shape now and i click in here and i select this bit of line work and i can delete that so let's just move this point here i can delete that okay so it means now that i've actually cut away my, where my name goes just to kind of make it look pretty good but this is totally up to you you can spend a bit of time put in your um please also introduce your monogram over here, so show your monogram as well if required. Okay, but ideally, you're pretty close to the end if you've reached this point. Okay, so one last thing that I can quickly go and do, and this is quite neat. So on my floor plans, you can add this to the floor plan layer itself. Um, you can combine these things later on, but for the sake of what we're doing, I'll, let me explain why this is quite interesting. So let's go to objects and let's go to layers. Okay. So let's open up our layers. Okay. So with our layers open. Okay. I'm going to go back to the plans page and I'm going to create one more. I'm going to call this um, plan info. Add. This is slightly different. This is where you're going to go and add so for example, like a door swing, for example. So let me show you how to do that. So here you can go and create, so shift, create a circle. So here I'm creating a basic circle. Okay. I'm going to move the circle. I'm going to put it this on this edge and I'm going to create. So what's neat about this, it allows me to create a shape. Okay. It allows me to create a shape to represent a door swing, for example. Okay. So here I'm going to move the object. So move this object over here. Here I'm just going to simply make sure that this is totally square. So select the shape, make sure that it's 200 by 200. You could measure the door, uh, long settings. So 220 by 20. Okay. About 20. You want this to be perfectly square and fill in stroke. What's neat is now we can apply. So here I'm going to go and say fill in stroke. 
Okay, fill in stroke. Here I'm going to go and say fill, none, stroke, yes. I can make this like a gray color. Okay, you can also use these colors at the bottom here. Oh yeah, so shift will use as full and then, okay, so shift, click, you can add. So I'm going to use this gray over here, just like that. And then this line weight, we usually make this point to, okay, and we make this a gray line, a dash gray line. Okay, so here we're just representing the, the actual door swing. Okay, so here I'm going to change this. And if you hold control down, you can see what it's trying to do. Okay, but I'll probably want to, let me just do this again. So let's just make this thing complete. I actually want the lines themselves. I want those lines to be Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly how I want it. So now that I've got the shape, I can move it. So go back here. I'm going to move this. So what you can do again is click the shape, move this to where that snaps in the corner. Now I can simply move it over here. And then I can hold the rotate button down. And I can go back to scale again. So click the line work again, scale. So here, I hold shift down. Ah. My apologies, make sure you lock the proportions, shift. So basically what I can do here now is I can make this, I can start representing the door swings. I can show how these objects will open, for example. Okay, so here I can click again. And now I can just say uh, path, object to path. Click in here, go to this point over here, grab these two points, and I can actually remove that segment of line. Now I've got a door swing. Okay, so here you can see very quickly, you can go and add a whole lot of additional information in here. You can add furniture, you can go and add a whole lot more information, and you can combine these drawings together. Okay, but maybe all that I'm going to do here quickly is go in here and just add some room names and room tags. So here I'm just going to add some more text. This is usually a lot smaller. This is typically about 3 mil, 3 mil. So here I'm going to change this to living room, select all the text, make sure it's 3 mil, 3.5. Here I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate. So here I can call this parking. Right click duplicate. You can integrate this as part of the plan. And um, so there's just two little things that we need to wrap up. We can add some trees very quickly and people. We're going to show you that quickly and then how we'll go and use our, we'll use GIMP how to add a better material here and show a bit more context with regards to our section. So just to cut a section through here to so you, you kind of know what's going on there and you have more detail. Here we're cutting through the bed so maybe I just need to fix how that looks. So fix how the bed looks for example and then fix that section. Okay. But here I'm just going to go and add some more. Okay, so now you can see that I've managed to add a lot of information. So we're actually in the home stretch now. So we might just want to neaten up this image. So let's just go back and see how this live link works. So let's open up GIMP. Okay, close that. This got changes. I'm going to go and file open. I'm going to go and open the plan quickly. Okay, so open the plan. So what do we want to do in the plan very quickly? So there's two things I'm going to do in the plan quickly. I'm going to go and fill in some of the walls, for example, with maybe, uh, which will look like a wood material, for example, or we can use some sort of pattern that will illustrate that it's a fill, for example. And I'm going to get rid of some of this information over here. Okay. So here I can leave this information on. It gives enough information. But for example, this information here, I want to get rid of. So I'm going to use a paintbrush tool. I'm going to find a paintbrush that I can use and I can find a color. So let's just change that. So maybe if I want to change that to white, uh, reset this color, for example. So here I can go and quickly paint over because technically it's a white background. So I can actually paint over this or I can use the race tool. Totally up to you. Okay. So here I can go and get rid of this information. Okay. Good. I don't need that information. I'll get rid of this eight quickly. Good, here, get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, so I've done some minor tweaks. 
but maybe I want to show like this is like a material. So in this, say I want to cut my building up and I want to show that this is a filled material that I want to use here. So we can use all types of materials to do this. Okay, there's another video that I'll share with you how to do some additional information. But here we can use some objects and we can fill in, so we can fill in the material over here. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer, add a new layer. And this layer, we can just give it a name, new name layer. I'm just going to call this uh, walls. Okay, press OK. Great. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a quick select tool. And we're going to select all of the wall where we've cut the walls. Okay, if it doesn't select everything that well, I'll show we can fine tune that. So I'm here I'm just using this quick select tool to select all of the stuff that I'm actually cutting with section. Okay, because maybe I want to use a different material there. Okay, so here it hasn't done such a good job. So here I might have to increase that fill. But So here, just keep clicking, keep clicking. It'll start refining it, okay. But typically we can say, well, actually this is filled with a word. So we've got some options now. Okay, so with this wall layer, let's just remove that layer. Let's activate this layer. So now that I've got this layer active, you've got two options. You can bring in a pattern and use it as a mask, or you can use the paint, the fill bucket tool, and you can use some patterns. So if you go to window, and you go and find your patterns, you've got a whole lot of patterns that you can use and drop. And these patterns are very easy to make as well. So you can make these patterns, that's totally up to you. But there's lots of tutorial videos on how this will work. So if I go to patterns, so if I select this wood layer and I drop it in, so what it'll do is it'll actually paint and drop a wood pattern in there, okay? Maybe that's too hectic. I want to make it look like a proper wood. So I'm using this wood pattern to fill in so when I cut, so it looks like when I'm cutting through this, there's a whole bunch of timber beams that they've used there, for example. It's totally up to you. You can use rock. You can even paint in these worktops. So there's a lot of information you can do. I'm just giving you a broad overview of how I would do this. For example, the bed, if I want to add a material onto the bed, okay, and it's just going to add another one here and call this fern, for example, furniture layer. Okay, so let's just select, select none. What's interesting is because it's on a layer, I can control its occupancy. So I can control a lot on how that works. I'm going to use another technique where we can use like a granite for this worktop. Okay, so this is another technique that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to use the furniture layer and I'm going to use a quick selection tool again. Okay, I've selected this, this worktop, for example. I'm just going to do it for the worktop. And I want to use a nice material like granite. So I'm going to go to my library very quickly. Okay, so let's just go to my library, D. Okay, I'm going to go back to these textures again, architecture textures. Here I'm going to go and find some general textures. So I'm going to go and find a natural stone. Um, okay, so I'm going to go and find some stone. So maybe like a marble. Okay, so you can go and find some really um, interesting materials. Okay, Let me just go back in here and just go to the architectural showroom. There's usually some really good materials in here, maps. Okay, so here we've got a whole bunch of materials that we can use. Like, so maybe I want to use like a granite, like a marble. So let's grab that image. So let's just say, um, scroll down and I'm going to drag this image into my view. Okay, literally, I'm going to grab this image. Let me just grab it again. Sorry, just, yeah, marble. I'm going to drag it in here. Okay, so this image is quite a large image. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to scale that image down. So I'm going to use my scale tool. So with the image selected, I'm going to use scale. Ah, let's just say uh, cancel for now. Yeah, let's close that. I'm just going to say select none. Select now. I'm going to use this as, as in the background. So I'm going to scale this image as a very high res image. Lock the proportions. Here I just want to get the scale correct. 
and I'm going to rotate it so that it's kind of rotated. So here I'm scaling. Let's scale it down a bit. Okay. So that's my marble material that I might want to use. Okay. Fantastic. So now the only difference, the only problem with this layer is you might have to duplicate this a couple times. Okay, so just to say scale. Okay, so say now that's the kind of image that I want to use in this instance. So I'm going to show you how you can make this a pattern. Okay, you can either duplicate this object a couple times and expand. You can actually expand this. Um, so you can actually tile this out and make it a lot larger. Okay. But in this instance, I'm going to select this marble layer. I'm going to make this, um, let's maybe scale it one, one more time. So scale it one more time. Just make it a little smaller scale. Perfect. And then I'm going to rotate it. Okay, so I want to rotate this to match this. So here I'm going to go rotate, rotate. So I'm going to grab this object, move it. So that's the center. So you want to move this object. So let's move it over there. It should move. I want to move. Okay, I just want to rotate. So I'm just say rotate. I'm going to move it again. So just just move this guy. So it's back. So it usually moves. Well, I want to move. Rotate. I'm just going to move this layer a bit. Move it. Move it over here. I just want to align this to this texture. Okay, and you'll see that it'll automatically scale this to suit. See how I'm going to rotate it just so that it kind of Works with that. Great. Rotate. Now I'm going to go and say select pixels. Now I'm going to undo. Sorry, let me undo that. I'm going to explain why. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to make a tabletop. And this is how you're going to make patterns that you can scale. So these are two steps. You can just use the pattern just like this, totally up to you. So I'm going to go and say select. And I'm going to go and say, um, select the marble layer that you just brought in, and you're going to go and say alpha selection. So it selects all of that information. You're going to go and say edit. And you're going to go and say paste as new pattern. So what it'll do is it'll add it into your patterns here. And let's call this um, work top. Great. Maybe let me select inverse, select invert. So that does happen sometimes. Edit, my apologies, paste as new pattern, worktop, press OK. That's interesting. Let me try that again. Control C, edit, so paste as new, right? No, 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 cancel. Edit, paste as new pattern, worktop, press OK. OK, great. No, that has not worked. So let's select invert. Select invert. Okay. Control C to copy, edit, paste as. So you can use this fullest pattern, but you're going to say paste as new pattern. Worktop, press OK. It will override that existing one. That's much better. Okay, great. Now that we've got that as a worktop. Okay, I'm going to. Remove this layer. So I'm going to remove this layer. Now. I don't need this layer anymore. So I'm going to remove that layer. Delete that layer. Delete it. Okay. So now we're going to go to furniture. Okay. Here I'm going to go and select. I'm going to do two things first. I'm going to create a selection and save a selection. This is quite important how to do this. So I'm going to select this object here. So I'm just going to use this one selection tool. I'm going to select just this object over here. You're going to right click and you're going to go um, select and you're going to say to path. Okay, so what this does is it will make a path now. So if I go here and I go and say, um, so let me just select none, select none. Okay, what this will do, it will actually select this object. So now that's a path, I can say, um, you can go and add this now. You can go and make this, make us a selection. So you can just grab this guy and you can go and say, path to selection. So what it'll do is it'll keep reselecting the path that you've saved. Okay, why do we want to do that? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this path. I'm going to copy this setting. I'm going to press to 
so on my furniture layer, I'm going to add this as a mask. But what I need to do is I need to select invert. So select invert. Okay, select invert. So that's great. So what it'll do is it'll select invert for me. Okay. Now that my invert is selected, what I can simply do now is go and use, go back to my furniture layer. I'm going to go and say add mask. I'm going to go and add a mask. Okay, pretty straightforward. Add layer mask and I'm going to say selection, press apply. So what this will do now, while I'm painting, so if I remove my selection, so if I say select none, okay, what this will do is if I use my paintbrush, if I use my paintbrush tool now, or I use my fill tool, my worktop, what it'll do, it'll only, my apologies, you must select the layer, that layer, and you fill. So what it'll do is it'll actually fill this area for you. I might have had to select a bit more of that, but you can see it's brought my work worktop in, okay? But what it allows me to do now is select and rotate that as well. So I can rotate this object. So if I went to layer rotate now, and I rotated this layer, you can actually rotate the fill. Okay. All right, so no, that hasn't worked that well at all. So what I might have to do is, anyway, let me just use this tool again. Let's just fill this. Here you can see you can use that concrete, you can use that to fill. Okay. However, Control Z. What I I'll maybe want to do is I want to make a larger area. So I'm going to go and make a new layer temporarily. Let's make a new layer. And here I'm going to go and make a quick selection tool. And I'm just going to fix some things. When I made the, the hatch pattern, I should have reduced the size. If there was a blank area that I should have just um, made the selection slightly smaller. Okay, so let me just fix this quickly. I'm going to use this quick rectangle select tool. And I'm simply going to use this full bucket tool quickly. All right, so what I can do here is I can use, there's a nice tool here where you can heal. So if I select, if you press control down and I heal this object, you'll see that it will try and make it look like this other object. So here I'm just using my heal tool very quickly just to kind of get rid of these lines. Okay, here again. So again, control, select that area, heal that, control, 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 control. So what it's trying to do is trying to heal these pixels. Control. Right. I don't have to do too much. Control. Control. Okay, just where my work counter is. Great. I'm going to select this, this. I'll, I can re-heal it a bit later. Now I'm going to use my rotation tool. And I'm going to use this to be quite, because I just want to see the information beneath. I'm going to rotate this like that and move this. Okay, you have to change that. We'll change that in a second. So rotate like that. Rotate. Fantastic. Okay. So here it's a floating layer. I do want to do that. Rotate. Rotate. Anchor. Part of furniture one. Okay, here I can change this all back to that. Now that all like I can do is I can select this stuff, control C. So here I can simply just create a quick selection. Control C. Go here, control and control V, control V. And then you can just say anchor down. So what that would have done, it would have cut out my worktop in the right axis as well. Just remember, you can make different patterns, but that's just how you do it. Okay. All right, so now you can get rid of that layer. I've used a mask region. Now I can simply just load this back into Inkscape. So all you do is you go File, Export As, okay. And here we're going to go and say Export As Plan. And you simply override the plan. You haven't changed the extents. Export. Now all that this will allow me to do, it will bring back in my plan correctly. And you can see it's starting to fill in those patterns. So that's how you can work back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
I'll do the same with my section. I'm going to make a concrete slab over here and do that as well. Okay. All right. So we'll quickly tackle that and then we'll put some trees in the background. Okay. So I just go back to GIMP. Because I've got this material already, file, open, open. I'm going to go to section AA. Okay, now they've got section AA active. Likewise, <clears throat> make a new layer. Call this walls. Okay. So here I can simply use a quick selection tool again. Here you just might have to add a bit more. Oh yeah. So just keep adding, hold control down. So you select there, shift will keep adding to the selection. There is other way that you can use a quick selection tool. You can use marquee tools. And I'll save this as selection because maybe if you want to add more detail, Okay, so let's, <clears throat> let's have another look at how we could do this. Okay, <clears throat> you can use this tool as well. <clears throat> so here I'm going to add to selection. So if you want to refine some information, you can just simply <clears throat> add this tool. Okay, let me just unselect, select now. So in this, maybe use this method rather. We're going to use this. This tool quickly. This works quite. This works pretty well. So you're going to select, click here, shift, hold down, click there. Control will lock it on X and Y as well. So you can zoom out. Control, lock it there. Control, lock it there. And then you can just go back and click. That's the selection. Now, if you want to keep adding to the selection, you use this tool over here. So here you're going to click here again. Click that tool again. So it starts this tool again. So start here. Press enter, my apologies, click here, hold control down again. Here you're going to go and zoom up here. So here we can actually use this tool to actually select what we want to select a lot better because technically we're cutting through some information over here. So let's scroll down, let's move this out the way. This is our floor, so this will go, you can hold control down, hold control, it will snap it on X and Y. Okay. But here you can also fine tune, you can add more information, remove information. Okay, so here we're going to go back here, zoom out. So sometimes this is a better tool to use than using the quick selection tool. Okay, it's a lot more accurate. Fantastic. <clears throat> So press enter, start again, lock it on the control. Fantastic. Okay, with all of that selected, we can simply go and use the full tool again. So now we can use our wood, same wood that we used in the other one, and we can fill that in just so that we can see that that's the materiality. Likewise here with the slab, this is going to be slightly different. We've got a floor that there's, a, there's earth, and here we've got a retaining. Here we've got a concrete slab in essence built up. Okay, so how are we going to do that? So let's just go and have a look at that. So here I'm going to create a new one. Create a floor slab, make a new layer. Okay, with my floor slab active. Select none, select, oh yeah, before we continue, add this to your path, select to path, just means that later on you can come back and you can reuse that selection again. Okay, so it's a very handy tool to keep your selections. None. Here I'm going to use my, this quick selection tool again, so here I've got a concrete slab that'll do something like that, like that like that, 
like that. And I know that this concrete slab will go back and you see it'll lock it on 45 degrees. I know that this concrete slab will do something like that. Okay, come back to here. Yay. Okay, great. Now, what's interesting is you can add this to, so let's say select, let's add the selection to um, path. Okay, what's interesting now, if I select none, select none, I can go back into my parts and I can go and edit my parts. If I right click and I click this edit tool, so switch it on, and here I can go and say edit path. So what this allows me to do now, it allows me to go and edit this path. Okay, so I can go and change what I've selected here. Here you can pick these points and you can move them. Okay, so here you can move all these little points. Okay, it's saying active path is locked. Why? Okay, and let's just say, let's move that. Ah, that's why. So here you can go and you can use the backspace key to remove some of these to fine tune this to make it look really good. So here you can go and fine tune your selection. So this is what's neat about using parts. Okay. Okay. That one we can't move because that's technically what's close. So let's just go backspace there. Oh yeah. Just remember it's got, you can make these things smooth as well. So don't do that. Totally up to you. But now you can see, I can go and fine tune the selection and make Select that one, backspace, select that, backspace. Okay, you could have just used the path tool right from the get go. Okay, you got a path, but I'm happy with that. Great, so let's make this my selection. Um, make selection, path selection. Okay, I can switch my path off and I can stop editing my path. So here I can go back to fill again. And here I can go and find a concrete material that looks pretty good. Now, there's one little thing I need to add here. You can see now that I need to add another dark line around my um, concrete slab again, okay? Because I might have to introduce some ground, natural ground fill here, which I'll show you in a second. So with my concrete selected, I'm pretty happy with the way my concrete looks. Just remember, you can go and add a whole lot more information. I'm going to leave the bed as it is for now. Okay, but it's giving me enough information and I'll just have to put a room tag in here for now, but that's that's great. With my path selection, what I can do now, so select none, select none. Show my path again. So what I can do now is I can actually stroke a line around my path. So I'm gonna to go to my brush tool. I'm gonna to go and change my brush tool to a pencil tool. And here I'm gonna change this. I want this to be a black line that I wanna stroke. And now I wanna look at the size. How thick do I want to straight this line? And if I keep zooming in, I think I want to stroke it as thick as that. And you can see that's brilliant. So now my pencil tool is matching that. So what I can do is now I can right click here. I can say stroke path. Now it's asking me what must I use? So I'm going to say stroke path with pencil and use color stroke. Well, up. So what it's done now is it's added that black line in following, if I'd used the brush tool, maybe it would have been a lot. You see, I've used a square tool, so it's actually, it's just the way it's pixel, but if you zoom out, you're not gonna notice the difference, okay? You could have also done that in Inkscape as well, but you can see that's good. That's all I wanna do. Now, the last thing I want to do, and I'm gonna use my path tool to do this very quickly, is I'm gonna go and add a path so these path tools work just like they do in. So here I'm just selecting around this shape in essence. And all that I want to do here is just add like an earth layer to my model quickly. And here I'm going to close. So let's just close that. Let's just close as best we can. Pull this line over here. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to make selection. Path selection. Okay, all I want to do now is just put in a earth layer so it looks like earth. Okay, so here you can find something that looks just like earth. So I use the paint bucket tool. Okay, so now we can see that that's our natural ground line. So you can find something that works 
that looks like earth totally up to you but you see we're maintaining that that line in the background okay so here i think these little stones and pebbles these usually quite a lot of these uh, water wood uh, food animal so there's quite a few of these little um, options that you can go and look at fabric food stone here we've got some stone so maybe just let's add the stone over here i think that will work well it might be too dark but that's fine okay that's great i'm happy with the results all i'm going to simply do now is go and go back to my layers if you're happy with the end results keep these settings and you can save this somewhere else but if you're done you can just simply merge all of these layers into one so you can just say flatten image it makes one image ah uh, you can't so you're going to grab all of these and merge layers you're going to merge visible layers merge okay great select none now and now i'm simply just going to reload it back into so i'm going to go to file export as section aa export replace export now i've gone back into inkscape now you see i've got a nice concrete line you can go and add some more detail line work here you can make this look a lot better here you can go and add a lot more information in but you can see this is working well the only thing i need to do now is add a little tag so i'm going to take this Control d and i'm duplicating it and i'm going to move it over here just undo i'm going to move this in here so i know that this is my bedroom when i'm cutting my section through okay now now we're in the home stretch all you have to do now is just add some trees and people maybe in the background here just to give this a bit more depth okay but you can put backgrounds go and look at some examples there are lots of ways to to do this but now i can just simply go and grab some people all i'm going to do now in inkscapers if i go to layers i'm just going to add a new layer okay this layer i'm going to call um people so trees add so it'll add it right so this add it right to the top generally your notes your page and notes sit above everything else trees and i'm going to add one more people add okay so all we're going to do now with our people one added we're going to go back into our working files where we've been working and i've got a folder here called images so i'm going to drag in some people so i'm going to drag this person in Okay, what's neat is now in Inkscape you can see I can add these people. You could have done this in GIMP as well. So once you add these people in, try and get to a certain scale as well. Work with the scale. All that this person is doing is just giving us a sense of scale. Okay. Just add them in. Once you put one person in, they to the correct scale. Okay. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab all of this. Grab that, grab that, grab that, grab that, and I'm gonna grab that, that. So let's just grab all of this information here quickly. I'm not gonna use the scale background. I was gonna maybe use the sky background. I'm gonna use some rocks quickly. Okay, that's fine. Let's drag and drop that in. Some of things, some of these might be very large in scale, but let's just see. Okay, so that one I can get rid of. That one delete. Okay. So these rocks, pull them in scale them get them to the right scale so here we can start adding in some additional information okay these are all come on the people layer we'll just have to move some of these around a bit that's fine so i'm going to put all of this in the landscaping so let's move that let's put this down there these trees let's put these trees in the background so now we've got some nice trees in the background that we can use Okay, just remember your trees typically sit we'll see either they sit in front or beneath you'll need to decide so we might have to make two tree layers one that sits in the front one sits in the back but that's up to you we can put these in the distance okay i've got some little grasses that we can use here put them in move our people get them all in the same line and use some kids totally up to you these grasses we can use again and again and again. You can duplicate these objects, you can array them. 
Okay, but a lot of this you could have done in GIMP as well. I'm just using a couple little, just a couple little images just to kind of give you an idea of how you could go about setting this up. Okay. So we've got some grasses. Let's get this person in the right location. Get these people all in one location. Get rid of that one. This one we can also. Okay, so let's just put them there. Them there. So here you just want to kind of get all of these people to the right scale. So as a typical person, look at a door. That's how I would scale it. That's about right. Okay, so now we've got some people in here. Fantastic. I'm going to get rid of that person. These kids I might leave in. Put them in somewhere. Put them around here somewhere. Okay. You can need this. Now you can go back to GIMP. You can make these black and white. That's totally up to you. Okay. So this tree, you can actually now, you can move this to the background. So maybe the trees, it depends. You can make two layers of trees that will be, okay, so select the tree. Get rid of that rock, I don't need that rock. That's all I need. Okay, so this is just to kind of give you an idea of how to go and do this. Okay, so the trees I might move behind the plan info. So move that, move that. Plan info, oh sorry, that's people. Let's move them up. So trees, let's move this right to the back. Okay, so if I move this, ah, it's because it's on the wrong layer. Okay, so if you go to objects, this guy, control X, you can just cut and paste it, go back to trees, control V. So now you can see the trees in the background. You can use this tree again. You can have a tree in front, tree in behind, but you can also use this in. Here I've got some of the images. Yeah, here I'm going to grab these two people. Control C, Control V. Control C, Control V. You can maybe put this in front. Totally up to you. These you can make groups and use them again and again. So these objects you can make as groups. So that one, that one, that one, and that one. Make group. Okay, as you see, it'll give it a group name. So now these you can move in individually. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Control duplicate, put this over here. Control D. Okay, all right, so totally up to you. Okay, so we can go and make these little elevations up very quickly just using some people. Okay, very, very easy to do.
Fantastic. Okay. Right, so once you've done that, I'll leave it just like this. You can now go and add your magic touch to this to make this work well. So in a nutshell, I've got my plan, I've got my perspective sections, I've got my notes, I've got a sheet. You're going to put your monogram over here. All that you've left to do is you can go file and you can say save as, so I'm going to save as, I'm going to save this as a PDF. So I'm just going to save this first as my my file and then file save as PDF. You're going to go and change it to a PDF file and you're going to call this um, save. Okay. So once the saves, here you're just going to leave everything 300 dpi just like this. Press OK. You give this a couple seconds. Close this file. Close this file. You don't need any more discard changes. Close that. Go back to my cabin. Go back to my working files. Now I have a cabin presentation, which you can then go downstairs and print with import. Okay, so that's what it should look like. So you can see it'll be very nice and neat. Okay, so there you've got your little cabin design um, using SketchUp to do most of the modeling, adding some materiality, and then using Inkscape and Gink to kind of set up your sheet.